Glucocorticoids are used in many inflammatory and autoimmune conditions. While being used to treat an underlying disease, glucocorticoids is associated with an appreciable risk of bone loss and increases the risk of fractures, which is actually more pronounced in the first few months of use. In general, risk of glucocorticoid-associated osteoporosis and fractures increases with age, dose, and duration. However, risk of fracture with glucocorticoids increases with doses as low as 2.5 to 7.5 milligrams daily. Glucocorticoids exert their effects on gene expression via cytoplasmic glucocorticoid type 2 receptors. Binding of glucocorticoids to its receptors stimulates gene expression, which will ultimately cause the effects of the glucocorticoids on the body. So, specifically related to bones, glucocorticoids receptors are found in all bone cells except for osteoclasts. Glucocorticoid use causes a negative feedback effect on the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. It actually acts as an exogenous cortisol, essentially. So elevated glucocorticoid levels will reduce secretion of ACTH, adenocorticotropic hormone, and also reduce the secretion and production of follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH. Reduction in ACTH results in reduced endogenous steroid hormone production from the adrenal glands, including cortisol and androgens. Low FSH and LH reduces production of androgens and estrogens from the gonads. Low androgens and estrogens increases the risk of osteoporosis, which we'll soon see why. Your bones contain three main type of cells. Your osteocytes, which will essentially become osteoblasts, you have your osteoblasts, the bone building cells, and osteoclasts. And in this case, immature osteoclasts, termed pre-osteoclasts. Glucocorticoids stimulate osteocyte apoptosis. With long-term use, the predominant effect of glucocorticoids on the skeleton is actually reduction in bone formation. The decline in bone formation is mediated by direct inhibition of osteoblast proliferation and differentiation, and by an increase in the apoptotic rate of mature osteoblasts and osteocytes. High glucocorticoid levels stimulate rank ligand synthesis by pre-osteoblasts, supporting osteoclast differentiation and net bone resorption. Normally, there's this molecule called osteoprotegerin, which regulates this osteoblast-osteoclast interaction by binding to the rank ligand, preventing osteoclast uh, stimulation, essentially. However, glucocorticoids increases osteoclastic activity by suppressing synthesis of osteoprotegerin and also by uh, increasing production of rank, which is uh, required for osteoclastogenesis. So rank ligand binds onto rank on osteoclasts, stimulating osteoclastic activity. It becomes active osteoclasts, which will break down bone minerals, and this is termed uh, bone resorption. In summary, glucocorticoids causes bone cell remodeling it reduces bone mass and impairs bone microstructure. In addition, glucocorticoids increases bone resorption by decreasing secretion of androgens and estrogens. The net bone resorption uh, by osteoclasts reduces bone mineral density and bone remodeling, increasing the risk of fractures. Bone resorption increases serum, calcium, and phosphate levels due to the breakdown of bone minerals. Now, when you have a high serum calcium, the body doesn't want to keep it. High serum calcium reduces intestinal absorption of calcium from the gut and also increases urinary calcium excretion 
because you want to get rid of all the calcium in your body. Now this will cause hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia will stimulate the parathyroid gland to release parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone works by binding onto parathyroid hormone receptors on osteoblasts, which will stimulate expression of rank ligand, which will further promote osteoclastogenesis and so increase bone reabsorption further. Now, indirect glucocorticoid effects that also predispose patients to an increased risk of fractures include uh, reduced muscle mass and weakness, leading to uh, increased risk of fall. Clinical manifestation of glucocorticoid-induced osteoporosis and fractures. Vertebral fractures are the most common uh, glucocorticoid-induced uh, fractures and are often asymptomatic. These are diagnosed as an incidental finding on chest or abdominal radiograph. In patients who have asymptomatic vertebral fracture, there is often no history of preceding trauma. The typical symptomatic patient presents with acute back pain after sudden bending, coughing, or lifting. Fractures due to glucocorticoid use occur at high bone mineral density values than occur in postmenopausal osteoporosis. Remember, on a side note, glucocorticoids can cause avascular necrosis. Now, the risk factors for having fractures uh, associated with glucocorticoids include advanced age, larger steroid doses, longer duration of glucocorticoid therapy, an increased risk of fracture has been reported with doses of steroids, glucocorticoids, uh, as low as 2.5 to 7.5 milligrams daily. And so knowing uh, the risk of fractures and osteoporosis associated with glucocorticoids, it's important to prevent the fractures. So anyone on steroids should do weight-bearing exercises to prevent uh, both bone loss and muscle atrophy. Patients should avoid smoking and excessive alcohol intake. Patients should take measures to prevent falls as well by using a walking stick or walking frame. Vitamin D and calcium supplements uh, can be effective. Pharmacological management can also be used, and indications to use uh, drugs include already having a fracture, a frailty fracture, if someone already has osteoporosis, uh, and if they're above 50, both men and women, and if someone is taking glucocorticoids and has diagnosed osteoporosis with a T-score of less than negative uh, 2.5. Bisphosphonates are first line uh, to prevent osteoporotic fractures. The side effects of bisphosphonates include reflux and esophagitis, for example, and so you have other second-line treatments, such as parathyroid hormone analogs, or denosumab, which is a monoclonal antibody against rank ligand. Interestingly enough, if someone is on denosumab, which is six-monthly injections, there's an increased risk of vertebral fractures if you stop taking denosumab. And so it's important to transition safely to bisphosphonates, for example. Bisphosphonates directly affect osteoclastic activity, inhibiting bone reabsorption. Parathyroid hormone analogs, weirdly enough, actually has a net uh, effect that reduces osteoclastic activity. Denosumab is a monoclonal antibody that binds to rank ligand and so it inhibits the rank ligand and rank interaction. In summary, glucocorticoid-associated osteoporosis and fractures typically occur more so in the elderly uh, at larger doses of glucocorticoids and longer duration of glucocorticoid use. The most common side of fractures uh, associated with glucocorticoid use is the vertebral uh, column and also uh, usually asymptomatic. First-line treatment for prevention are bisphosphonates.